Oh, a man who really doesn't need an introduction. He gets a lot of attention, whether he wants it or not. He is the University of Minnesota Athletics Director, Mark Coyle. Mark, Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for coming in studio. All right. I have to start by asking you probably the hot question out there. You've been dealing with some of these questions since Friday, and that's the suspension of Reggie Lynch. What can you tell us? What's the latest? Well, you know, Rashini, as I talked about on Friday, it's it's such a difficult thing to go through because uh, the communication and, and and trying to communicate to people. But but due to student privacy laws, as you know, uh, the university has a very robust policies and procedures in place. Uh, you know, we we follow those procedures. They're governed by both federal and state law. Uh, and the most important thing to us, anytime we have to deal with a situation like this, is that we provide due process for all involved. And, and obviously, as we talked about on Friday, uh, you know, Reggie is suspended from athletic competition. Uh, that has not changed since Friday, and uh, we'll continue to move forward and monitor the situation. Are you at all concerned it will detract from the basketball team season. I mean, they had such a great last year. Coach Patino really looking forward to this year. Are you concerned about that at all? You know, I'm not because, you know, Rashina, I have a great job. I deal with 750 student athletes. I deal with coaches who are incredibly competitive and want to do things the right way academically, athletically, and socially with all of our student athletes. And as you know, change is a big part of what we do. And, and, and you never know what a season will turn out to be. You know, who would have thought two years ago after an 8-1 season that we'd be the number five team in the NCAA tournament? And obviously we had, we have high expectations this season for that team. And, and, you know, yesterday they gave great effort. And I know Coach Patino, his staff, and those students will continue to respond while well continue to represent us. All right. So you're the guy with the big job. You have not only a basketball team or a football team to worry about, but there are a lot of other teams and there are some big wins, sometimes the gems of the athletic department. What would you say are a couple of the big gems right now that you want all of Minnesota to know about? Well, you know, I, I always go to the academic side first. You know, I, I understand that my title says I'm athletic director, but but I feel a big part of my job, uh, Rashini, is is education and, and how do we uh, focus on what we do academically. And, you know, we're very proud of what our student athletes do. And I think sometimes it gets lost because people do pay attention to the wins and losses. But w- when you have an institution with our 750 student athletes that are the highest rated public school in the country with respect to student athlete academic success. Uh, that's phenomenal. You know, we have Duke, Stanford, Notre Dame, and Minnesota. So we're the highest public school. Uh, our kids are doing it phenomenally. We've been above a 3.2 for four years. So it's been in place a long time at the University of Minnesota. It's just a great culture and it's a great story that we can tell. And yes, we want to win. We get that. We have 11 Big Ten championships over the past three years, which I think ranks third in the Big Ten. So we have lots of positive things going on. Now, is that something that is newer? You know, these kind of great uh, grade point averages ranking, what, fourth in the country? Uh, or is this something that's been a consistent thing in the, in the department and with, uh, with the different athletes? You know, I, I can tell you, Rasheen, if you recall, I was here from 2001 to 2005 and had a chance to uh, start out as a director of marketing and work my way up to an assistant athletics director uh, under Joel Maturin. And I, and I can tell you, even back then, uh, you know, Minnesota is very unique. Uh, we do take great pride in, and you've heard me say this before, Rashini, you know, doing it right matters here. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, we're a part of a world class educational institution and it starts with our coaches. It starts with our student athlete. We have a great academic center. Uh, JT Brew and his staff do a phenomenal job of, of helping our student athletes to excel academically. And so again, there's a great foundation in place. And I feel like a big part of my job is to make sure we continue to build upon that foundation and make sure we continue to have that success academically. What is something that might surprise Gopher fans out there and other Minnesotans when it comes to your job and what you do and kind of the day-to-day? Well, you know, I, I always go back to when I left in 2005, I went to the University of Kentucky, and, and I had a chance to uh, to uh, go from a senior social athletics director to the deputy athletics director. And, and for some reason, I wanted to be an athletics director. That was a goal of mine at that time. And, and I remember talking to the athletic director at Florida, a guy named Jeremy Foley, and he talked about – that when you become a leader, and I think it's any leadership position, whether you know you're in education, banking, whatever it may be, as you move up and you become a leadership position, you learn really quickly that a lot of what you deal with is personnel. And how do you put people in the right spots? How do you resolve conflict? How do you feel or give people the opportunity to grow and succeed and feel like they, they can invest in your department, their program, and continue to grow professionally? So I think people would be surprised at how much time I spend uh, what I call brainstorming and trying to look at the future and how can we put people in the right spots to make sure we have staff, we have coaches, we have student athletes that feel like they have the opportunity for growth and the opportunity to continue to learn. I'm talking with Mark 
Coyle, and you can too. Give us a text, 81807, if you have a question or a comment. He is the University of Minnesota Athletics Director, and uh, he's here to share a little bit about his vision for 2018. I have lots of questions for him. Let us know if you do. Phone numbers, 866 or 651 989 9226. And again, the text line, 81807. Let's talk about women's sports versus men's sports. What do you want to see in 2018 that's maybe kind of a new phase, a new chapter? We're kind of behind. What I'd like to think is we've moved away from just some of those traditional Title IX, like, hey, everything needs to be equal, that kind of advocacy. Hopefully we're there, Mark, at least in the really good programs around the country. What do you want to see? Well, you know, I I talk all the time about, you know, again, when I was here from 2001 to 2005, when my first year at Minnesota, that's when we had the split departments. We had the women's department, we had the men's department. And and I was very fortunate to see those departments merge together and to see the communication and to see two different foundations and philosophies kind of merge together and build upon that. And and what I love about what I have a chance to see in 2018 is Athletes Village. You know, we're very excited about that. It's it's a huge new facility for our campus. And, And what I get excited about is that's going to impact all 25 programs, all 750 student athletes. And probably the most exciting thing for me, Rashini, is, you know, we have a training table area where right now a lot of our teams are separated. So, you know, the, the baseball team's over here doing their deal. The volleyball team's over here doing their deal. The softball team's over here, the men's basketball team, et cetera. And now we'll have a chance where our kids will be able to interact more in that new facility. And I'm really looking forward to, to have a chance to see our student athletes interact more and, and be, uh, you know, more involved with each other and more supportive of each other. Yeah, let's talk about Athletes Village because we're just about to open it up, right? When is the official opening? Yeah, it's uh, this month. You know, we have a chance to uh, to move in there. Uh, I believe in the next uh, seven to ten days, we'll start to have people start to move over in there, which is going to be awesome. You know, and, and I know you had a chance to kind of see it from the outside, but I think people are going to be shocked at how functional the building is, and I think they're going to be surprised at what the impact is going to have on our department. And, and I like to remind people, you know, we're so thankful for the Board of Regents. We're thankful for uh, President Kaler, his leadership, and for the university community supporting this project. And, and this is just a next step for us as we continue to build a program uh, and develop a, a program that will make all of Minnesota proud. All right, here's a a quick text before we have to go to break, and then we'll take more calls and texts. This person says, is it time to only have the main men's sports, football, basketball, hockey, and only keep the main women's sports? I hope not. You know, I talk about the educational side of what we do, and, and, you know, Rashina, you're around our program a lot. You see that. You know, if you can see, you know, I I go back to – my favorite moment in my first year at the University of Minnesota last year was our women's hockey team when they lost in the championship game of the Frozen Four. And that makes no sense because they lost the game. They, they actually lost in the semifinals. And if you could have been in that locker room and if you could have seen how each one of those young ladies talked about their experience, talked about what Brad Frost and that coaching staff has meant to them, uh, it gives you chills. And that's what's great about my job. So, you know, I, I love being a part of a broad-based program. Uh, I am so proud that we have all these young men and women who put on that Minnesota jersey. And I wish the public knew how much pride they take when they wear that block M on their chest because they want to do it the right way. And they're just so thankful for the support they get from people coming to games, making gifts and those type of things. All right. I want to get into that. A lot of really great texts coming in. We're talking with Mark Coyle. You can too. 651-989. Nine two two six, or give us a text eight one eight zero seven. We are back, Rashini Rajkumar, with you along with Mark Coyle, University of Minnesota Athletic Director. We're getting in lots of calls and texts for him, so I want to go to those. But let me remind you of the phone lines six five one or eight six six nine eight nine nine two two six. You can also text eight one eight zero seven. Julie is on the line from Minneapolis. Hi there, Julie. Hi, and thanks so much for for taking my call. Um, to me, this is a very serious issue, um, and I just wanted to say that I come from a long line of Gopher fans and at least one outstanding Gopher athlete. And but I want to say, as a woman, as a resident, as a taxpayer, uh, when Mr. Coyle rightly said it's a very difficult thing um, for the athletic department to go through something like this, uh, referring to the suspension of Mr. Lynch. I think it's important that all sides remember that nothing equals the difficulty and the trauma that a victim goes through that comes to the University of Minnesota as a young girl full of bright hopes and and promises. And I I think that has to be weighed, and I'm sure Mr. Coyle and others are are trying to weigh those things, but I feel it's a very important thing um, that we have to remember. Thank you. Thank you, Julie Mark. 
Yeah, Julie, thank you. Thank you for the call and the question. And, and Julie, you know, I can tell you when I got here in June of 2016, we have spent so much time uh, with our student athletes, with our coaches, with our staff, you know, trying to define what are our core values and who do we want to be. And, you know, I think a, a key part of being a good leader is you have to listen to people. And, and we talk to our staff and, and we kind of focus on, you know, we talk about we want to, we want to make sure that we're, we are humility, what I call low ego, high output. Uh, we talk about we want to be defined by our actions. You know, talk is cheap. You're ultimately defined by your actions. Uh, we talk about being honest and striving to be honest in everything we do. And we talk about innovation. Uh, but another thing that we spend a lot of time that we talk about is genuine concern and care for everybody. Uh, that's incredibly important to us. And, and I think if you talk to anybody on my staff, if you talk to our coaches, our student athletes, uh, if they said, what are some of the things that Mark Quill walks around talking a lot about? And we talk about that care and concern for everybody and making sure we do everything we can. We understand we're very visible, but we want to make sure we provide a great experience for any student that touches golf athletics, whether they're a student on campus, they're a student athlete. And please know we'll never lose sight of that goal. All right, we have some more calls and texts for you, Mark. Let me take this text. This person wondering, how do you generate more interest in gopher sports with students? Well, you know, I think students are such a big part of our venues. You know, if you have a chance to come to a volleyball match, you know, we have a volleyball team that's ranked in the top 10. Uh, they've been to back-to-back Final Fours. They went to the Sweet 16 this year. When students are a part of the crowd of any of our sports, it's amazing the energy they bring. And to be very honest with you, that's the future for us. You know, we, we've got so many great uh, fans, but but our goal is try to get students into our buildings. You know, we're excited that we sold out our student allotment for men's basketball tickets this year, had strong sales for, for men's hockey and other sports. But, you know, again, I go back to that story about our women's hockey team in the semifinals in the Frozen Four. Every one of our kids is working so hard to, to compete at a high level and do it the right way and get their degree and compete at a high level. And any support you can give our student athletes, if you got to know them, you got to spend time with them, you see that they're really great people. They're really great people who are learning, who are growing every day. And we're just so thankful for the students who support our program. And we need to continue to be creative and innovative, as I talked about, to get more people to come to our sport, support our programs. But again, we've got great kids who do a lot of positive things. You know, this year at the State Fair, I had the opportunity to have several of your folks on my show on the porch, the coach of the swimming and diving team and the coach of, of uh, the gymnastics team, both those women, they each brought a grad with them. Uh, you know, there are there's a lot more than only football and basketball at the U. And I think sometimes people forget about that. They do. You know, you know, obviously we're not blind to the fact that, that football, men's basketball, men's hockey, they generate a lot of publicity. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But, but I always go back to the analogy, you know, uh, Rashini, I try to meet with every recruit that comes to campus. If I'm in town and one of our sports is recruiting that young man or young lady, I try to spend time with them and meet them. And what I tell them is, if you have Minnesota written across your chest and you put on that Minnesota jersey, we're going to do everything we can to support you. But more importantly, I remind them that when the women's gymnast sprains her ankle, it hurts just as bad as a starting quarterback. They both have to go through the same treatment. They both have to go through the same rehab. And I try to remind people that, you know, just because it's not on national TV every Saturday doesn't mean those kids aren't working just as hard in another sport. You know, and I can tell you if our cross country team on the women's side wins a Big Ten championship, that's just as important and just as exciting to that team as it is to our football program. And we understand media, people pay attention to the football side of it, but please don't ever lose sight of those other kids who are working so hard to do what they love to do. Yeah, and you know, whether we're talking about the U, St. Thomas, St. Catherine, wherever, St. John, St. Ben's, you name it, um, I'm not that old. I mean, I'm old, but not that old. And when I was in high school, there was no girls hockey team. There, no, none of my great, you know, friends who did happen to play hockey scratch games could have aspired as a girl to go on and be of women uh, on the women's team in college. So that in itself just shows us, you know, how young some of uh, this decision and and these kinds of uh, teams are at the national level, at the collegiate level. Michael is calling from Minneapolis. Hi there, Michael. Good afternoon. Uh, a year ago, the university, someone released. The report about the 10 male athletes and a sexual assault. And the university never condemned the release of that report. But I can find, figure out no one who benefited from releasing that report except the university. And so I'm very disappointed that the university never investigated that and never brought the person who released that to justice. 
Well, my guess is there are some things that you can't talk about. Maybe you looked into it, um, but, you know, whatever you can say to Michael in response. Yeah, you know, Michael, I appreciate the the question. And, you know, as I said at the beginning with the first question, Rashini talked about, you know, these things, and, and I get it's frustrating. You know, it, it's hard when you have to stand up and, and you try to explain to people that due to these student privacy data laws, you're not allowed to say a lot about these situations. And, you know, I, I don't disagree. As we talk about genuine concern and care for others, uh, you know, our goal is to make sure we do things the right way. And, and again, I, I appreciate your understanding. I know it's frustrating. All right. Let's talk about your vision for the year, Mark. It's 2018. Uh, let's talk and, and let's maybe get some predictions. I mean, you know, 28 days, we got a Super Bowl here. So let's let's cast the net wide, not only for the Gophers, but what are some of your predictions and hopes for this year? For uh, in broad? Yeah, let's go broad. You can start with the U if you'd like. And then, you know, hey, let's talk Vikings. We've got uh, Maureen Bausch out in our green room right now. She's coming on next. Uh, who knows who's going to be in that Super Bowl? Any predictions for us? Yeah, well, you know, if I can start with the U, you know, the, the first thing I'd like to talk about is, as you know, Rasheen, you and I have a chance to, to see each other. It feels like every month through a committee that you and I work together on. And, you know, I, I talk a lot about, you know, I'm in my second year now, and, and, and I talk a lot to our staff, our students, and our coaches. I'm the fourth athletic director since 2012. There's been nine senior administrators who have left that department since 2012. And, and one goal that we're trying to have this year is to make sure we're very consistent and intentional with our messaging as we try to move our department forward and try to create some stability and consistency for all of our staff. So, you know, my goal is that we have a department that is focused exclusively on our student athletes and making sure we provide them a great experience. Also to make sure that the people who buy tickets, the people who come to our games, the people who make donations to the Golden Gopher Fund feel appreciated and valued for the impact they have on our kids. They are truly funding dreams. All these kids had dreams to come to a Big Ten institution. They had dreams to get an education from a world-class institution. And we want people to make sure they understand that when they make a gift, they buy a ticket, you're helping fulfill that dream. You know, with respect to the, uh, you know, the great thing about, as you know, I grew up down in Iowa. And, uh, Waterloo, same town as my husband. Yeah, Waterloo, tough town, USA. It <laughs> and, is. Uh, you and, learn uh, a lot on the streets of Waterloo. Yes. No doubt, no doubt. But 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 you know, I remember as a kid, you know, coming up to Minnesota, and we would come to Viking games, you know, once a year, and that was a big deal. I remember coming up to the Twins games, uh, you know, and, and it's so exciting to see the success of the Vikings. I've had a chance to get to know Kevin Warren, who you'll not find a, a more classy gentleman, just a wonderful person with the Vikings. Uh, follow the Twins closely and excited about what the Twins did. Paul Malter, a Gopher grad. Have gotten to know him a little bit and just great to see what he's done, what Dave St. Peter, the Twins organization's done. You look at what the Minnesota Lynx have done, uh, in my opinion, the model program, the Twin Cities, the success they've had, uh, what Coach uh, has done there is phenomenal. And obviously, Lin Lindsay Whalen, we're very proud of her being a former Grofer grad. You know, the Timberwolves, you talk about the United, uh, you talk about the Wild. I've gotten to know the people at the Wild. And, and I, I really feel like the sports teams in the Twin Cities are, are on the verge of doing really special things. You know, and we talk about this jinx. It never works out here. It's all, oh my gosh, it's Minnesota. I think that's going to change this year. I see a lot of special things happening across the board, not only at the U, but also across our partners with the six professional teams. All right. You heard it from him. Let's wind down with this final text question, which really uh, resonates with me, Mark, because I've always thought that sports at whatever level is such a force for community building. Any sport, whether it's golf, cross country, whatever you're looking at, this listener says, love athletics character building. How do athletics program support academics? Well, you know, you hear this a lot. You know, when, when athletically it's done right, it can be a great window for your institution. And, and if we do things the right way because we have so much visibility, you know, I, I remind people, 750 student athletes, about 300 full-time staff. So we're about 1,000 people in our department. My gosh, we're very visible, right? I mean, we're, we're, every day there's a section of the newspaper dedicated to what we do, the sports section. And every day people talk about us. And, and our goal is to make sure we tell the story about we're the highest rated public school in the country. We've had four straight years where we've been above a 3.2. Uh, you know, the countless academic all Big Ten student athletes, the countless academic all American student athletes we have. And we are so fortunate to be affiliated with an institution with a world class reputation. Uh, it's got such a great academic reputation. And again, our goal is to make sure we're great, great caretakers of that name, Minnesota. So when we step on the ice, when we step on the volleyball court, when we dive in the pool and we have that block M on, we want to make sure we do everything we can to enhance that, not only department, but enhance our institution so we continue to attract high-quality people to our great institution. 
All right, Mark Coyle, thanks for coming in studio. He is the Athletics Director at the University of Minnesota. Appreciate your time uh, in uh, the station today. Thank you, and Happy New Year, and go Gophers. All right, go Gophers.